Now your favourite subject, Slash. Uh, you're the <laughs> Minister of Forestry and a lot mm. has been made uh, mm. of the role of Slash in the destruction of bridges and railway lines. Mm. And you've set up a ministerial inquiry. Do you think that is enough? Yeah, absolutely. And the reason I say that is, um, keeping in mind, this was for the Tairawhiti region. And the yeah. reason for that is 25% of the North Island's highly erodible soils actually based in the Tairawhiti region. And 75% of the Tairawhiti region, so we're talking about Gisborne for those who you know, don't know what Tairawhiti is, uh, 75% is hill country. So quite a unique uh, region of this country in terms of soils and topography. Uh, I do believe that forestry is the answer. I, I really do. However, it's about right tree, right place, and right management regime. So in the past, um, certainly after Cyclone Bowler, a lot of the Tairawhiti region was planted up, uh, and most of that was planted for production. We're now learning that on some of the slopes um, that these trees were planted on, perhaps no harvesting should take place. I mean, we're talking about quite complex hauler operations where you know you, you basically cut a tree down here, you haul it up to a skid site, you cut it into grades or lengths and that gets trucked out. Quite complex, quite dangerous. Uh, in some regions we now believe that those trees will actually should never be cut down because of A, the danger or B, the ecological and conservation aspect. Um, risk is too high. So we're learning more and more about this. But um, there's something called the National Environmental Standard for Plantation Forestry or NESPF. That pretty much provides an overarching um, set of regulations under which foresters must operate on harvesting sites. Now, councils have the ability to put in place regulations and rules that are more stringent than the NSPF. Gisborne did. Um, hence, so when, you, when you're harvesting in Gisborne, you, you had to get a resource consent where in a lot of the areas you didn't have to. We've just done a big review of that. What we found is, by and large, across the country, the NESPF is about right. But then there are some areas, like Tairawhiti, where we do need to put in place special measures, and that's what the recommendations that will come out of this inquiry, um, I suspect, will feed into the final version of what the National Environmental Standard for Plantation Forestry looks like. Because I believe some countries, like Germany, for example, they don't actually cut forests around, they thin them. Mm. And uh, do you think that's an option to look at? Well, it may be an option with some species. And let me give you an example. Redwoods, which grow for a thousand years, you know, um, so that's true intergenerational forestry. Uh, when you get really high value species like that, then it is, uh, there is an economic value in hiring a very expensive helicopter and selective cutting. We used to do it down in the down in the, um, in the west coast of the South Island, you know, you would extract one really big tree because you got a hell of a lot of wood out of it and it didn't disturb the ecosystem of the forest. With radiata, uh, I don't think there's a value proposition that would justify the expense of a helicopter and selective harvesting like that. But in Germany, you, you know, you're talking about oak forests and, yeah. and, um, and possibly much higher value timber than you get out of our radiata. But... We are looking at different management techniques and saying, okay, how do we mitigate the risk of forestry debris ending up in our beaches and our rivers and certainly taking out our bridges?